It is Friday morning at 1130. We started uh, Bible study a little bit late because Chris ran an errand to the bank and to the post office. You want to tell them something? While I'm eating? I wasn't prepared to tell them anything. Why? Because I wasn't prepared. To tell well, them. tell them what it's going to be about. Oh, uh, let's see. Genesis 37 is the story of Joseph. It's the initial story that you get with the coat of many colors um, that everybody's heard. It's one of those stories they always, like when you're a little kid, you're in vacation Bible school and stuff, you know, they always tell you this story of the coat of many colors, and then you color the coat, you know, on the, uh, they always give you the, uh, what do you call it, the crayons. Yeah, the, I, would, I knew the crayons, but the color. So color you, pages. Color pages, and you color it in. So everybody that went to church when they were little, I'm sure it's colored the coat of many colors. If you were expecting me to run this boss. <laughs> I'm eating my egg. I'm waiting up for a few people to come on. Uh, I was going to look on here and see if there was anybody on here. There's a couple of people. Okay. Genesis chapter 37. We are talking about Joseph and um, Jacob is the dad. Now, he's called Israel later. Um, and so, remember, what are you doing? So, remember that uh, Jacob had several wives. He had Rebecca and Leah and uh, who knows how many other ones, but they had a bunch of kids. And we talked about his daughter on Monday, Dinah, getting in trouble and how his sons took revenge on a whole city. So we know he's got a few sons that's pretty mean, okay? Um, then here we are in chapter 37, and he has a son named Joseph which is actually the son of the woman he loved the most, Rebecca. And more than likely, I think that's probably one of the reasons he favored him so much, because he came from Rebecca, which was his real true love. Okay? But we know these kids, some of them are mean. Well, they were so mean, they hated this Joseph. And his dad had made him a coat of many colors. Now, I've read in a couple of commentaries this morning, and some say that the coat of many colors was uh, pretty famous, you know, for the, the people to be wearing. And then some say that it really wasn't even a coat of many colors. It was a sleeveless coat. Um, it says that if somebody wore a sleeveless coat, that they seemed to be in a higher position um, over the other people. And then the people that had sleeves on their coat um, were more of the working class. Now, whether or not that's true, we have no idea. I just thought I'd bring that up. Anyway, so his daddy made him this coat of many colors. His brothers were already jealous of him. And Joseph had a couple of dreams. And in those dreams, he was over his brothers and he was ruling over his entire family, even his mom and dad. And that just made his brothers even matter, you know, because they thought he was uh, a daddy's boy and they didn't like him. So Joseph uh, was also the type that was a good man. Joseph was a good man, okay? And his brothers, some of them were really mean. We know that because of what they did to the city. Well, there was a couple of times I think he went to uh, tattle on his brothers on what they were doing, and that made him mad at him too. But anyway, he goes to his dad, and his dad sends him out in the field to, to find his brothers. Um, and when he finally finds them, they decide they're going to kill him. Well, one of the brothers didn't want him to be killed. He actually wanted him to live. Um, I've got to cancel this phone call. They actually wanted, he wanted him to live. So apparently he did have one brother that had a pretty good conscience. And what was his name? Do you remember, Reuben. Chris? Reuben. And Reuben said, let's not kill him. 
Um, and they found a whale. They said, Reuben says, put him down in this whale. Well, Reuben was going to come back and get him later, so he didn't starve to death. Well, they put him down in the whale. Reuben leaves. They, some people come by, and they decide to sell him. So Jacob is sold as a slave going into Egypt. And, of course, they'd taken his coat, and they killed a lamb, and they put the blood all over it. And they told Reuben went to try to get him out of the whale. I found he was gone, and he went to his brothers, and they showed him the coat with the blood. Then they took it back, showed their daddy the coat with the blood. And so it was supposed to mean that Jacob had been attacked by an animal and killed. Joseph. Huh? Joseph. I mean Joseph. So they plotted this scheme. Now, it shouldn't surprise us, considering two of his brothers had killed a whole city, slaughtered every man in it. So he had some pretty mean kids. Um, it says... Uh, Then one of the commentaries tells us that real problems arise there in a family of civil, civil rivalry, of hatred, and their inability now to even say a kind word to him. So Joseph, no doubt, was suffering much from the attitude and the actions of his older brothers. Can you imagine having ten older brothers that were sort of jealous of you because of your position? So we all are in families. We all know somebody or was in a family whose parents did have a favorite. We know what that's like. Um, and I have to say, when I was growing up, we had four kids in our family. And my siblings always thought that I was a favorite. And I think it was because I was the kind of kid, really and truly, that wanted to please my mother and daddy. I, I, I was that way at school. I wanted to please the teachers. I wanted them to be proud of me. I wanted them to encourage. And I was, I was just that kind of kid. Uh, and so I was the same way with my parents. And uh, my brothers and my sisters sometimes were jealous. Um, and, I, and I know they thought I was kind of a favorite. But I was the kind of kid that wanted to please the parents. And whether parents should have favorites or not, uh, it's just kind of like with God, I think. Uh, you know, he's not supposed to have favorites. We're all supposed to be equal. But don't even think for a minute that he's not proud of us as our father when we do right by him, when we read his word and we follow his commandments. And so if you've got that kind of kid, it's hard not to favor them. Uh, and all of our kids are treated different. Some are lazy, some are not lazy. Some will help us with chores, some won't. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's, na it's a natural kind of thing. And I know it's not right to have a favorite. And neither me or Chris have a favorite, but we do each have a child that's more like us than the other. Amy's more like me, and May is more like Chris. So it's easier for us to understand the way they think the things they do, because they are more like us. Now, are they our favorite? No, but that's just the way stuff happens. Anyway, these brothers are mad. And um, poor Joseph gets the brunt of it, and he's sold into slavery. And we know that it was God's providence. I wanted to say this, and then Chris could say what he thinks. It was God's providence that he be sold into slavery because he's going to eventually... Uh, be taught in Egypt and save his family from a famine. And so it's part of a uh, plan that God had. Now, this is where I, I'm i going to say something, and the Chris can say what he thinks. As I was thinking, um, now, whether or not him being sold into slavery was God's providence, it's really hard to know because here we have kids who are mean as the devil uh, who are absolutely not in God's will, doing something to their brother. And and I don't know that them doing this to their brother was actually God's will because it was evil, okay? But, but then you say, well, maybe it was in God's providence that this happened so that things could happen later. But the way I look at it is God would have made a way regardless. Uh, God would have made a way for Joseph to be the leader and take care of his family regardless of what happened. So I don't really know that 
this evil thing they done to Joseph was God's pl real plan, or if He just used it and made it work. What do you think, Chris? Oh, I think it was God's plan, um, because like when you go in and you look at you know the Old Testament. A lot of the things that happen in the Old Testament show you pictures of what are going to happen in the New Testament. And a lot of the people in the Old Testament are pictures of God or they're pictures of Christ. You know, they're people that represent uh, what's going to happen to Christ when he comes here. And that's what Joseph is. Joseph is a picture of Christ. And there's all kind of ways you can see that in this, just in this chapter. Um, from the way he's described and things like that. Like, for example, uh, you know, it talked about Israel, who would be the father, loving Joseph, and it used the word loved Joseph, just like it used the word loved where it said, like where Abraham sacrificed Isaac, um, or was going to sacrifice Isaac, and God told him, take the son whom you lovest and sacrifice him. And uh, it used that term for the first time. And then it uses the same term here when it talks about Jacob loving Joseph more than his other children. Uh, and it said he was the son of his old age, and it talked about him making him a coat. Well, the coat is, when you look at what the coat is, the only time it mentions a coat of many colors in the Bible, it's always somebody that is royalty, you know, the son of a king, that kind of thing. Well, Jacob wasn't a king. You know, that kind of thing. So that just kind of shows you, you know, he was the son of royalty. That kind of, that's who he represented. Um, and then it talks about his brothers hating him. Now, when I read some of the commentaries, it talked about how that, like Tammy used the word, like he told or he tattled on his brothers for something they had done prior to that. Well, when he did that, it talks about that he had made an evil, that, that his brothers Back at the beginning of this chapter, uh, had there were four of his brothers that were involved in this, and they did something very evil. And he told his father what they had done. And if it uses the word evil, they weren't like not doing their work or telling a few little lies. They were doing something evil. And that's the thing that I take out about Joseph when he does all these things, you're like, well, why would he tell his brothers those dreams? And Because those dreams were about his brothers being obedient to him or being subservient to him. And he, he has two dreams like that. He tells his brothers. And then some people look at it and go, well, why would he t hurt his brother's feelings and tell them, you know, the, that dream? Because of, you know, we, of course it would make him mad. It even made his father mad uh, because of the dream. And that's the thing about Joseph being a type of Christ is he's righteous. Like in this chapter, everything Joseph does is righteous. And that's the way Christ was. He did think he was without sin. And so Joseph being a type of Christ, if somebody did something evil, he was going to deal with it. And he dealt with it. He told his father what his brothers had done. Uh, when he had these dreams and he had to dream twice. And uh, in the Old Testament, if you had a dream two times, that was it. If you had that dream two times, it was going to happen. Everybody knew that. And when Joseph had that dream two times, that his brothers were going to have to be obedient to him, they knew, his father knew this was going to happen. And his father had already kind of lined it up for him to be in charge anyway. Uh, but uh, when his brothers heard that dream, they hated it. It says they hated him. Not that they were mad at him or jealous. It not, it does say they were jealous, but they hated him because of his dream. Well, he didn't make the dream up. God gave him the dream. You know, God put him in this position. So Joseph really was a very righteous person, and everything he did was what God wanted him to do. And he didn't care whether it made other people mad. He didn't care whether it would hurt his brother's feelings. Uh, he wasn't concerned with that. He was righteous. And that was the way Jesus was in the, in the Old Testament. If somebody, if there was a sin they had committed, he would point out their sin. Uh, a lot of people look at it like, well, Jesus just accepted everybody. Well, no, he accepted everybody because he loved them.
but he wanted them to accept him as the Christ or him as the Messiah. So part of that is he had to point out, you know, he was righteous, they were not. And uh, that's what Joseph did here. And a lot of people look at it like he's a tattletale or he's spoiled. I don't think he was spoiled at all. I don't think he was a tattletale at all. I think everything he did in this chapter was something that God wanted him to do. And I do think that God worked all this out because all these things that happen here are pictures of what happens later on in the New Testament. And he shows the story over and over again of Christ being sent to earth. And when he got here, him, uh, you know, suffering for other people's sins, uh, you know, him being a deliverer. I mean, it shows these things over and over again in the Old Testament. So I don't think it's, I mean, even though they did evil things, and even though what they did to him was bad, in the overall plan that God had for Joseph, this is part of the plan, I, I believe. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. since, it was a, since he is a picture of Christ, you know, uh, maybe God's providence was for all that to happen so he could show us what Christ was going to have to do or uh, was going to do um, through Joseph. Um, so the cool thing is that later Joseph does save his family. This is a, Genesis is just so full of, to me, of great, great stories that give you so much faith. You know, according to the Bible, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And the only way we're going to have faith, true faith, is to read his word. And just the chapter of Genesis is amazing to show you how God works in the lives of people and just full of stuff to give us faith in God. I love the chapter of Genesis. It's one of my favorites. So um, I guess that's all we're going to talk about today. Uh, if y'all have any questions, you can post them, or if you want us to go further on the subject, you can let us know. Uh, Chris will probably be joining in on Bible studies on Fridays. On Mondays, I will be doing them because I get up earlier than he does. So we will see you on Monday bright and early. And I think I am going to study um, the bad words, using bad words, and whether or not it's sinful on Monday. We'll, I'll try to study that over the weekend. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day, and we're going to say our prayers. Um, you want to say our prayer, Chris? Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Lord, thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity uh, to look at your word and see everything that you have there for us. Uh, we thank you that we have the, the Holy Spirit to open our eyes when we read, and uh, we thank you that your, your word is something that is spiritual and that uh, you give us the opportunity to, to see things over and over again that you want us to see in, in your word. Um, help us today, Lord. Watch after us, and, and uh, we pray that everyone that um, watches or our channels and stuff are, are blessed, Lord, that you'll take care of them. And uh, thank you so much for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope y'all have a great weekend. See you soon. Love ya.